So, and it was very special, a very special moment. And, and I think he's very, very happy now in his life. And I'm just so, so happy for him. Um, Knight Rider, of course, was a wonderful stepping stone to many wonderful things in his career. Um, he went on to have a huge hit record in Germany that sold, I think, three million hour albums that launched a musical career. Actually, the same producer that produced that record is producing John Sakata and me today. Nice. So, nice. you know, things do kind of come full circle. It's kind of funny the way things happen. Um, and Edward. What can I say about Edward? He was such a dear, dear gentleman. He was a gentleman, wasn't he? And we would laugh. We had so much fun. Um, Edward was actually as fair as I am. Um, snow white hair, milky white skin. Um, I'm English, Irish descent, of course he is. And um, David was very tan always. So, on screen, so that our skin pigments weren't so contrasting, they weren't going to make David white, er, so they made, they made Ed, Edward and me um, very tan. And they put this bronze, dark makeup on both of us. And at the end of the day, it was so funny, because uh, it would change out of wardrobe, and we'd both have these like bronze Vs, and and bronze gloves up to where our um, <laughs> and we'd walk home out of the studio looking like freaks. But um, he he was just here. You, you all know that he passed away, and I think it was '97, right? Right. See, you all know all the details. Uh, what am I sitting up here? You you could do these seminars. Well, we're your perspective. <laughs> you know more about this show than I ever will. Um, but we love him, and we miss him, and, um, you know, his spirit carries on in the reruns that, that are still happening today. And um, it's just a marvelous thing to think that this show, from so many years ago, is still resonating with audiences today. And new generations are seeing it, and it's as if it's in production all over again, and little kids are, are being touched by it. And... Um, that's just amazing. It's just amazing. Um, hi, Nick. Thank you for all that you do and all the things that you're doing to, to carry on the legend. And you're having an event in October. October. Night Rider Reunion. Reunion at Universal Studios. So, Speaking of Universal Studios, I was actually mayor of Universal City. I bet y'all didn't know that. No. I probably couldn't find a lot of trivia that you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, while I was under contract at Universal, Lou Wasserman, the great legendary icon Lou Wasserman, who was CEO and MCA of Universal, um, he called me into his office and he said, Rebecca, we used to have a mayor of Universal City because Universal City is an incorporated city unto itself. And, and a lot of times they have these contract players, everybody from Rock Hudson, and Doris Day, and Janet Lee, and Tippi Hedren, and all these contract players at the studio would serve as honorary mayor. So we said, we got a lot going on at the studio these days, so you're going to be mayor. We're going to reinstitute this little um, tradition. So I became mayor, and there was a lot of fun things going on. It was the 25th anniversary, I think, of the tour. Um, in fact, just the other day, speaking of Facebook, it's so cool. On Facebook, people will post these pictures that I don't even have. <laughs> uh, I'm like, oh, I remember that. Um, there was this picture with me and Tippi Hedren and Janet Lee and Conan the Bo what is, was it? Co Conan the Barbarian. Conan the Barbarian, right? With the big sword and everything. I guess they did a movie at that time. Anyway, um, we were celebrating the tour and. It was, it was really fun, and Lou told me. Well, it was really cool because every time visiting dignitaries came to the studio, I would get to have lunch in the commissary with the Prime Minister of New Zealand, or somebody, um, with Mr. Wasserman, and me and then I would get to take them on the tour. And it never got boring, because they changed the tour all the time. It's a wonderful thing. If you haven't been on the tour, come to Nick's event, 
and come on the tour. The Universal Tour is marvelous. They show you a lot of the backstage secrets and things, how things are filmed and how stunts are done. Isn't it? It's great. Um, and I remember Lou telling me, he said, Rebecca, it was my idea to have the tour. And he said, we made more money on the tour than all the TV shows and movies combined. And he said, we're building a studio in Florida. You know why? Why, Lou? So we can have a tour of it. <laughs> Brilliant. Anyway, he was quite a character. Quite a character. Um, but yeah, special. It's just a special time. And I have such wonderful special memories. And, you know, you, you from what we were talking about earlier, AJ and Ron, you know, what, what made this show different? Why are we having... These events, all these years later, talking about this television show. What was it that made it special? What was it that resonated? And I could ask myself all that all day, that, that same question, but I can tell you that the answer comes to me in the stories that you tell me. Um, I was in Vegas a couple of years ago, and there was this black gentleman in a um, kind of an African um, outfit and he came up to me at the autograph table and we, we talked and he said, I grew up in Malawi and I was born in this little village and we only had one television that we had to share with several families. He said, I didn't know I was poor. He said, well, that's what we all were. He said, but, but we had this television, so we thought we were kicking with gas, as they say in Texas. And he said, we shared this television, and I watched Knight Rider. And I learned that one man can make a difference. And we communicate. He still writes to me. And... I am proud to tell you he just got his doctorate degree at Stanford University and he has a position waiting for him at the UN. Wow, that's awesome. Um, and that is because something about this television show said, yes, you can. You can make a difference. You can, you can make a difference in this world. Um, another <laughs> but the one thing I did want to add, in addition to your comments on uh, the morality, the saint of the morality that uh, was featured on there, was also the twist that, that I really enjoyed was the buddy aspect of the show. So we had Kit, who was uh, uh, Tommy's lassie and yes. uh, Roy Rogers' trigger, yes. always helping out to reinforce that. And people really do want to see good overcoming evil. Yes. At least people in those days did. I mean, today, of course, everybody's more interested in who's banging the Kardashians than watching <laughs> 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 But it, it, we don't make that kind of show anymore. We want to make the most vile thing on television to get more people interested in this. I mean, it's a funny thing. I, I, I guess I, my wife and I were coming back from uh, L.A. It, it, we're on the airplane, and there's a girl, nicely dressed girl, very attractive, had to be at least, you know, 29, 30. I'm reading the Wall Street Journal, my wife is reading some other thing, and this girl has People Magazine, Us, and some other equivalent magazine. Obviously a grown, intelligent woman, and she dressed as if she had some, some wherewithal. And you know, that's what's happening to our society, is that these people are reading all this junk, watching all this junk, and that's what our society is becoming. And Night Rider was one of the last things to uh, try to call that notion. Awesome. I agree. Yeah. Yes, yes. All right. Uh, yeah. Short right. shorts. <laughs> oh, we <laughs> all hated it. <laughs> Nervous as you are on the very first day of filming, you know, but everybody was so hospitable and so welcoming and made me feel so comfortable and so welcome. And I just think we, I, I knew from that, that first moment it was going to be okay. <laughs> we're all going to...
And if I may follow up on that, uh, what might be your most embarrassing moment? That occurred on showing up the first day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was reading right, your contract. Right. <laughs> That's good. That's funny. Yeah. Next, don't be shy. I have a fanboy question. Okay. In, in the in the episode Nightmares, where Michael loses his memory. You actually drove Kit. Yes, I did. did. What, was that, what was your impression of that? And did you have any problems with the steering wheel or any, anything? Um, like that? You know, you think um, just driving a car, you do it every day. But I mean, when you're doing it and you know you have to hit a mark and you have to stay in the camera angle and you have to do, do and you've got a whole crew of 50 people watching you, it's a little nerve wracking. <laughs> Um, especially, can you imagine if April wrecked Kit? You <laughs> <laughs> put it back together. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think I was focusing so much on what I had to do and listening and doing what I was told that it wasn't until I actually, the, the director yelled, cut, and I got out of the car and went, hey, I drove Kit. <laughs> um, historical. I think I was the only um, girl who ever drove him. Patricia McPherson did. Yeah, oh, yeah. No? Short, so. A real short space uh, in uh, um, um, uh, Man of the Drones. That's it, thank you. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, you guys know more about this show than we do. I'm amazed, amazed. Yeah, anyway, it was an honor. Yes. Yeah. Talk more about your musical career. Oh. Oh. I know it's taken it out of my career, but still. Thank you. Well, I, I, um, I read. Well, I. I I studied classical music, and I'm grateful for that training because um, you can keep your instrument um, in, in good voice and all, no matter how many tours you're doing and how many shows and long hours and so on, so I'm grateful for that. Um, I recorded uh, for Curb Records uh, on country, had a gospel career, um, performed all over Europe and the Far East, and I've toured all over the country and doing a lot of charity events. And, performing a lot. Um, I'm very excited about this new record. Well, I had, a, a, my last album was called Dare to Dream. And uh, um, this new record, uh, John Sakai, is called Dreams Come True. Uh, and I believe that, uh, we do need to believe that dreams come true and, and not lose sight of that. And um, I'm, I'm very excited. It's sort of a classical crossover, um, very pop. But also, um, it's, it's the Paco Bell canon that our producers took. Um, our other producer, besides Joel Diamond, is Rudy Perez. He's down in Miami. He's sort of the David Foster of the Latino world. He's done Christina Aguilera and Beyonce's Latin album, Luis Miguel. Um, just an amazing, amazing uh, producer. Um, so we recorded this duet, and uh, we have a whole album of songs that we're going to be uh, finishing and then going on tour together. And I just, I can't wait. It's going to be really uh, an exciting, exciting <clears throat> musical combination.